good morning hello avinash good. good morning sir how are you i am well thank you i am fine the nice to see you regularly on this platform right yeah. this faculty for encouraging all the young surgeons to participate in this academic meetings thank you lord sir yeah that's true uh, i think uh, there is a need for this sort of uh, teaching sessions for all uh, pgs also yes so primarily sir focus on the uh, mcs is very yeah. good so i also request you in your center encourage others to join this yeah. whatsapp group and join yeah. the channel so they can get timely regularly update through youtube channel sir also yeah i let them know good morning sir good morning <laughs> the nice to see you yeah i got uh, yes sir you are the presenter of the session yes sir okay so i am making you co host also sir <coughs> hi punit hi hi i thought i heard the size the voice yeah yes please so i have dr punit there is a moderator for today's session sir has already sir. joined me so yes, with sir. the permission of sir you can start the presentation good morning sir sir good morning please go ahead yeah sir Sir, is my screen visible, sir? Is it moving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So I'll uh, start, sir. Uh, uh, I am presenting uh, the case of a 34-year-old female from Bharatpur, a housewife belonging to the lower socio-economic strata. Uh, the, her chief complaints are abdominal pain for one and a half years. Uh, she had complained of epigastric, dull aching uh, pain, insidious and onset, uh, remaining for a few minutes. to half an hour and progressively increasing in intensity requiring oral analgesics localized to the epigastric region infrequently radiating to the back it was not associated with any aggravating or relieving factors intermittently associated with postprandial abdominal discomfort and epigastric fullness also associated with occasional gastric type of small vomit quantity vomiting there is no history of reduced appetite or weight loss no history of jaundice pruritus fever no history of hematemesis or melina no history of awareness of mass per abdo no history of uh, severe pain or chronic pain in the past i would also like to know any relation of the vomiting to the food intake the frequency of vomiting and progression any abdominal distension post meals relieved by the vomiting any restriction in the oral intake due to the same or uh, any feeling of early satiety uh, the amount in each vomit uh, containing ingested food particles or stale foul smelling food ingested the previous day any history of dyspepsia regurgitation hard one and medicines taken for the same in the past any history of loose stools foul smelling bulky malodorous stools any is past history of jaundice or blood transfusions any history of uh, tuberculosis or contact with tb patients in the family any history of uh, that is what i would also like to know uh, in the past history she is a known hypothyroid uh, i would like to know how long on on the other things and the dosage any recent history of pregnancy uh, she had a recent history of pregnancy but underwent dnc in view of the disease three yeah, months back any history of ocp intake a uh, person is she is a vegetarian by diet bowel and bladder function is normal no history of any addictions menstrual history is normal family history there is no history of uh, gi malignancy in the first degree or second degree relatives so that is the history sir right so what is the red uh, bit i didn't understand that sir right. uh, actually i was given the case capsule uh, right. so right. i have virtual okay okay right okay right so you want to go back to that uh, uh, the red red uh, slide yes sir yeah so why the uh, bulky malar odor stool sir because uh, this uh, can occur in chronic pancreatitis so it can uh, present with exocrine insufficiency right so is that common to have this uh, just with this uh, pain no sir relatively uncommon but uh, no other contributory history was there so and why jaundice and blood transfusions i mean in this sir, particular initially on that uh sir initially i was uh, thinking of uh, that it could be uh, it could be a liver uh, mass or hepatomegaly presenting with such symptoms so any contributory history to uh, for the cause of hepatomegaly so this is, all this is mostly as a routine that you are saying okay right go ahead go ahead okay so you do would you like to summarize here yes sir a 34 year old female known case of hypothyroidism 
presented with complaints of dull aching epigastric pain infrequently radiating to the back with occasional episodes of small quantity gastric type vomiting for one and a half years without any loss of weight loss of appetite or melina hematemesis so what would be your thought process in this uh, so that it can be uh, a disease uh, my differential will include either a chronic pancreatitis if uh, it is a proper gastric outlet obstruction history i am able to elicit then probably due to history why right? sir because I mean, of the the very first uh, thing you are going to say is chronic pancreatitis is that is it common to have uh, vomiting with that uh, sir vomiting recurrent acute actually recurrent acute pancreatitis can be there recurrent attacks having vomiting or probably a pseudo cyst causing compression on the gastric outlet causing vomiting so i mean you can uh if you go sort of uh, uh, statistically with this with this summary what all would you like to give first uh sir and it can be biased by what you know on the I, uh, since i don't know uh it looks to me that you are biased by uh, what you know in the uh, examination isn't it uh, no sir uh, examination actually uh, yes sir because examination is unremarkable there is no palpable uh right I mean, yes, what would be the what would be the, what would be the other DDs that you if just this history is there? I mean, hyperthyroidism yes, related might be even commoner than uh, chronic pancreatitis actually. Yes, sir. But it can be uh, probably a complicated peptic ulcer disease, but not uncommon in uh, uncommon in today's era. It can be a left lobe liver lesion. It can be acute cholecystitis or a presenting in this manner the current attacks yes yeah, so wh- why not why not gallstone disease i mean e- even atypical uh, you know presentations of very common things would be much common right uh, specifically yes, with vomiting do we get that in chronic pancreatitis i mean if you say that is your first thing for chronic pancreatitis to present with gastric outlet obstruction would be very very rare indeed no yes sir unless there is a pseudo cyst or a and you calling it dull aching pain then you changed it to uh, acute pan- recurrent acute pancreatitis huh? last minute as a sal- you, you want your the cat was thrown uh, from the roof and you're trying to land on all fours but uh, not so very successfully huh? so you'll have to give the dd of exactly what you're saying uh, so even though it's uh, uh, a peptic ulcer is not uh, sort of become uh, It, it may not be as endemic as it was a few years back, but it's still not that uncommon. It would still be commoner than chronic pancreatitis with uh, gastric outlet obstruction. So you don't have to apologize for it, you know, while giving it. Okay. Anything else, uh, sir? It can be a pancreatic head uh, cystic neoplasm, but relatively uncommonly presents with gastric outlet obstruction. Okay. So all those are rare things. No, any uh, anything else you would like to consider with this? uh sir it can be cholecystitis also okay why cholecystitis why would you get vomiting uh sir uh, actually the vomiting has uh, not been characterized further uh, but in cholecystitis due to the pain there can pain there can be reflex pylorus spasm stimulating vomiting so that's the gallstone colic itself which will cause that no we don't need yes, cholecystitis yes, for that okay yes sir okay and go okay go ahead Sir, Can I interrupt, uh, Puneet? Yeah, 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 this side. Yeah. What is group pancreatitis? Sir, uh, it has a predilection with uh, alcohol, and uh, there is uh, inflammation in the pancreatic or duodenal group, causing uh, inflammatory edema, stimulating uh, gastric. Uh, it can cause gastric outlet obstruction along with the pain episodes due to the inflammatory edema and the compression. Yeah. Why was that not one of your differential diagnoses? sir uh, no contrary she is a female and there is no contributory history of alcohol and uh, uh, i have kept uh, uh, chronic pan- uh, recurrent uh, i mean chronic pancreatitis there were no acute uh, pain episodes or dull aching pain so that okay. can be one of the causes of chronic pancreatitis yeah okay. go ahead Uh, general examination patient is conscious and oriented moderately built and nourished with bmi of 25 kg per meter square uh, her vitals uh, her uh, pulse rate is uh, 90 per minute bp is 110 by 80 mmhg respiratory rate is 16 per minute and she is afebrile and the saturation on probably room air is 98% her 
her uh, ECOG performance status is 1. Uh, there is no pallor rectus, fetal edema, generalized lymphadenopathy, or cyanosis. For abdominal examination, on inspection, the abdominal is pendulous. All quadrants are moving equally with respiration. Umbilicus is centrally placed and inverted. No visible sinus, engorged veins, and pulsations. No visible lumps. Uh, hernia orifices are normal. Planks are empty. On palpation, finding of inspection corroborate with the palpation. No local rise of temperature, soft and non tender. No hepatosplenomegaly, no other palpable mass. Hernial sites are normal. Any, uh, I would also like to know whether there is any succussion splash or any visible gastric peristalsis. On percussion, the liver span is 13 centimeters in the mid clavicular line, right mid clavicular line. No shifting dullness, auscultation, normal vowel sounds heard. For rectal examination, normal fecal staining is present. So, this is the examination. Right, so nothing really. Yes, sir. Okay, so now. Does it rule out anything else? I mean, uh, it does not uh, rule out uh, one of our, the differentials. The only point being that she is currently uh, having a preserved performance status uh, with a good BMI. Right. So, what do you want to do now? Uh, sir, I would like to uh, evaluate all previous records available with the patient and uh, uh, then proceed to investigate, what sir. What records do you want? I mean, what, what will change? Sir, sir, if she has been evaluated outside and any uh, cross-section imaging or ultrasound that has been done previously or any blood investigations and especially at the time of any acute attack of pain that she had and she visited the hospital. Okay, so you want to list out now the order you would like to put it of your differential diagnosis? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you got I, it? No? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I can keep uh, a complicated peptic ulcer disease as my first differential. I can uh, keep. Have you a, Hello? Okay, okay. So, I mean, for the exam, it's a good idea if you actually write down because. Uh, uh, at that time, you're quite worried and, uh, you know, it helps you both ways. If you haven't got something uh, written down, uh, you can say, yeah, that's a rare possibility and all that and still go along with that. And if you have it written down, you forget to say it, you have that on your, uh, thing written down and you tend yes. to be just nervous if you. Uh, so a peptic ulcer disease, a gallstone disease, uh, pancreatic head, uh, cystic neoplasm and uh, uh, chronic pancreatitis and uh, any retroperitoneal tumor. Okay, retroperitoneal tumor. Okay, why? Uh, sir, they, they can have this typical uh, epigastric pain leading to the back. It's a long history. There are slow going okay. tumors, right. relatively so benign. Yeah, when you're giving something uh, exotic and all that, say, or it could be a variety of other rarer conditions. So you give your uh, sort of subjective feeling. Uh, uh, you know of the weight of that possible diagnosis as well sir sir okay i mean you can call it portal hypertension as well but uh, there's no nothing to actually say it uh, isn't it yes sir it may be just palpable etc etc okay. yes sir yeah so what do you want to do now uh, sir uh, uh, i would like to get an uh, if no in my previous investigations available i would like to get a ultrasound uh, of the abdomen and uh, Blood investigations, uh, like complete blood count, KFTs. Yeah, you will definitely give get a blood workup also before. Uh, so you know, uh, we haven't said what specific diagnostic test you'll do or whatever. So you'll mm -hmm. have to give the blood workup first, okay? Sir, so, like complete blood count, yeah, kidney function tests, liver function tests, and serum electrolytes since she's having vomiting and. Uh, so um, it will, so you might get your uh, even your LFT might give you some you know there might be a chronic active hepatitis or something medical uh, it might give you a clue there so I think you still need your do we have the bloods here? Uh, yes, sir. We are having sir. Uh, we are having the uh, the HV. Uh, she is uh, not anemic. The uh, leukocyte count appears to be in the higher side. She is having leukocytosis with a neutrophil uh, predominant picture. And uh, electrolytes are relatively preserved. Her GFTs are uh, within normal limits, and her LFTs appear to be grossly normal with uh, non-reactive viral markers. Uh, the tumor markers that have been done are grossly within the normal range. And also, I would like uh, to get a, a random blood sugar of the patient done. Why? 
since, since I have kept uh, one of my differential as chronic pancreatitis, uh, I would uh, like, uh, although it is, it manifests as a very late stage, but still I would like to have a baseline random blood sugar of the patient since I'm taking out all the blood industries at the same time. I propose to you the blood sugar is high. It's 180. What would be your first thought? That she is, I will check whether it has been taken two hours post meals and she, she has not, not eaten anything. Has no, she has no prior history of uh, uh, diabetes, but you, you get an abnormal value. What, what disease would you be most worried about? Sir, uh, a pancreatic uh, pathology. If, it's that, if I say that a recent onset diabetes, what, what are you worried Sir, about? Uh, she is not having any loss of weight or loss of appetite and she is a re re younger female. But yes, uh, in pancreatic uh, is that, head. Is that necessary? Is it necessary to get that or can you have this as an independent marker? Why, do you, get have that? Why do you get diabetes in uh, uh, recent onset diabetes in uh, pancreatic cancer? Uh, sir, it can be uh, due to the uh, recurrent pancreatitis that is occurring or due to the ductal obstruction that the secretions uh, are not going or uh, it can also be due to the gland it's atrophy. An, it's an obstructive diet. Uh, is it because of gland atrophy that will be more in chronic pancreatitis then, no? Yes, sir. I'll rephrase that. You operate on this patient with, uh, uh, chronic, with the CA pancreas and the diabetes goes away. Is that possible? Yes, sir, that is possible. Sir, due to some inflammatory that markers of, and that because uh, of some uh, interleukins. No, no, then they're not due to obstruction, sir. Then so it can be due, due to some inflammatory markers or tumor related markers uh, secreting that are uh, causing impaired glucose tolerance. Okay, so the tumor itself can elaborate uh, because some of a proportion of these actually do reverse on uh, after surgery, huh? So it's possible to have so any insidious uh, uh, diabetes can be because of pancreatogenesis diabetes can be because of a uh, mass. You have to be you know careful of that. Fifty percent of them will be because of uh, malignancy. Okay. Okay, go ahead. What what else, sir? I would like to get an ultrasound of the abdomen done, sir. Ultrasound. Okay. What is the ultrasound show? Uh, sir, there is a retroperitoneal necrotic mass arising in relation to pancreas head. Uh, no ISVRD, liver, GV, and spleen are normal. No free fluid in the peritoneal cavity. So, what is what are your thought processes now? Sir, it can be. I guess you are told the entire uh, history, isn't it? Uh, you you are given the whole presentation, is it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. History is finished, sir. No, no. I, the uh, sorry, I'm I, I'm joining this session after a long time. Is it like the uh, Monday morning sessions? You are given the entire uh, history, entire PowerPoint? Uh, sir, I was given the entire history and examination and uh, this was added in addendum in the morning so that I can show these also. Oh, okay. Right. So what is your thought processes now? You finally uh, found something positive. Sir, uh, my thought process would be that it is... Uh, probably a, ma a ne necrotic mass in relation to the pancreas head. So I would more likely think of, uh, uh, I, would, uh, I would like to characterize it better on a uh, cross-section imaging like a CT scan. I think what is the thought process you will have now? Sir, it is a pancreatic uh, head mass or it can be a re a re rarely a retroperitoneal tumor. So it can be a cystic neoplasm. Or it can be... Uh, you know something more that I don't, uh, because I don't know, I, I don't have the PowerPoint. Uh, uh, if you get this report, what would you think of yeah, in a 34-year-old lady? So, okay, let me put it this way. What are the important things on this ultrasound that you're looking for based sir, on the differentials that you said? Yes, sir. So the pancreatic, I would uh, like to know the pancreatic duct diameter, the pancreas. No, what, the, your first, what is your first diagnosis after, after you had done all the... Uh, complicated peptic ulcer disease, sir. Okay. Second? Second was a gallstone disease, sir. So after is, this, is this useful for knowing gallstones? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, they have written, sir, GB is normal. Sir. Yeah, yeah. So you have to say that. That's a very, very, very important negative thing, isn't it? That the, G, the one thing that this ultrasound helps you is to tell you, if you see a CT scan with a GB normal, will you accept that it cannot no. be a GB No, no sir. So an ultrasound is the modality of choice. Yeah, so it's extremely important that there are no gallstones. So 
the at least one thing i want from you when you are looking at this is what is the important negative thing if you do if if instead of this an endoscopy was done and they say the mucosa is normal it it so factor rules out and the uh, uh, the uh, endoscope can pass through that you so they've said it's there is no uh, gastrointestinal obstruction that's a very very important negative thing isn't it so we yes, need sir. to know what now wh how do you rearrange your, the whole idea is how are you rearranging your uh, differential diagnosis in the subsequent algorithms yes, yeah yes, so there are no so the chance of it being a gallstone disease goes down dramatically yes, yes, but sir. you see now a necrotic mass in a 34 year old lady would it still be possible So, so what thing, sir? I mean, in a thirty-four-year-old lady with a necro necrosis in the pancreatic head, yes, what sir. would be the commonest cause? Uh, necrosis, sir, would be acute, even if it's not pancreatitis. Yeah, exactly. So, biliary pancreatitis, which, pancre is, which has hmm. been uh, sort of sort of occult, it's not probably manifested as an acute attack. But there hmm. is. So you're not, you're completely discounting that as a possible diagnosis, isn't it? Uh, no, sir. I I have now kept a chronic. Pancreatitis. Pancreatitis. Yeah, acute pan. So, is it chronic pancreatitis is common to have necrotic masses? Uh, no, sir. In acute pancreatitis, that can be there. Okay, let me rephrase this. Is it is it likely that an ultra ultrasonologist will give you this uh, uh, diagnosis of necrosis? Can he characterize uh, the tissue there? No, sir. No, sir. What? It would be a CT, a non-enhancing. So that's his interpretation, isn't it? It yes, is not yes, a finding. So what would he what would he have found? Just a, a mass a hypoechoic or a head heteroechoic mass lesion in the head of pancreas. Or heteroechoic, yeah, exactly. Either heteroechoic or a liquid uh, kind of uh, mass mass lesion. They can do a Doppler and find out whether it's a vascularized mass or not. So ultrasound can detect, and also usage of ultrasound contrast should not be discounted. It's very easily done today. Yes. So basically, you got a leukocytosis. You got a necrotic mass. Why can't it be a simple abscess? Uh, sir, uh, it, there is no history or uh, contributory history like uh, fever or acute episodes and such a chronic abscess. Uh, no. But it but can be. You it can you be did, an abscess. It's ask in your red list. You did ask for history of contact with TB. You don't have that history. Yes, sir. I I am not given that. Possible to have all that. You can yes. have a similar picture. Patient has a grumbling yes. pain. Yeah. So it can be that. Things like retroperitoneal tumors and cystic neoplasms of pancreas tells me you know something beyond that uh, thing. Yeah. So you you can you know finally say that if you say that as a, suppose it's the uh, diagnosis also and you uh, you know say it in a casual manner that uh, you uh, uh, it, it's it's credible. So the thing is, unfortunately, in the exam, you're going to be not having this uh, PowerPoint, isn't it? You don't yes, get sir. this in the morning at all. Yes, I think uh, we should slowly start simulating that somebody else should be giving you the, uh, as you say, they should give you the uh, findings because that biases you. So we're not really simulating that in the real world. That's not that's not how you're going to think, isn't it? Yes, sir. So uh, so now you want to rephrase? Forget about what you know beyond this. Yes, so sir. Even Oh, so, like uh, uh, in Cochin, I had this uh, uh, meeting yeah. where I was loading my slides, and by mistake, I saw the case capsule they were presenting, and the diagnosis was endometriosis. Now, endometriosis is not a diagnosis you're going to say ever, isn't it? Now, uh, unfortunately, they called me out from the audience to give a comment on that, and uh, uh, if I had said endometriosis, <laughs> there would have been a you know mayhem. How, how could you think of that? So I had to go oh, around all the other things, and uh, so you have to exactly that. Need a smart phone. You need to record it. Sorry, somebody wants. Need a smart phone. Come on. Inadvertently keeping your uh, mic off. Need a smart phone. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Sir. So what all would you think of with a with a uh, you know so called liquid or heteroechoic mass? Sir. <laughs> It can be a uh, uh, at least give a pancreatic a, abscess. A, pancreatic yeah, abscess, abscess like, in the head of pancreas. When you're saying something like uh, you know uh, pancreatic cystic mass, uh, uh, is that what it is? I mean, uh, is it what the diagnosis is at the end? No. Okay. So because if you're saying that, also put that into perspective and say 
very rarely you know mixed masses like this can be you know a solid cystic uh, lesion in, in a young lady like this it could be a rare uh, uh, thing which is which i would be surprised to find but finding this on ultrasound that's what i would think of okay sir can your pancreatic health see a pancreas will also be there yeah okay hmm, see a pancreas pancreatic mass you yeah, want to characterize it better go ahead what do you so want to do since, since the kfts are normal i would like to get a uh, pancreatic phase uh, CT done for the patient. Only pancreatic, pancreatic protocol. Pancreatic protocol. CT done. Pancreas protocol. Okay. What is the pancreas protocol? Uh, sir, uh, in this uh, about uh, 80 to uh, 150 ml of contrast is injected uh, slowly uh, with a contrast injector uh, at the rate of 3 to 5 ml per second, and uh, around uh, 1 to 3 mm images are created. Uh, the images are taken in the uh, pancreatic phase that is probably the late arterial phase 36 to 40 seconds so uh, and, uh, can i can i just one second interrupt so you don't want a plain scan at all you just want a no. contrast enhanced right i would have a scanogram and a plain non contrast ct a and after that non contrast why do you want a scanogram and a non contrast sir uh, non contrast to see for any evidence of calcification any uh, so that is there the diagnosis was chronic calcific pancreatitis pancreatitis so it's the most sensitive way of picking it up okay then So yeah, pancreas protocol doesn't mean only the pancreatic phase; it means the entire. Uh, yeah, okay. Then, then the portovenous phase is taken at around sixty to seventy seconds. Okay. So why do you want the portovenous phase? So to see for the uh, the liver. The liver is uh, perfused well in the portovenous phase, and to see for uh, if this, since this is a mass lesion in the head of pancreas, contact with the uh, portal vein or the SMV or the splenic vein, they are better characterized on this phase. Okay, so the most important reason is for looking for because a large necrotic liver. mass could be a uh, CA pancreas. You want to be very sure that there are no liver metastases. Liver. Okay, good. So why do you want the arterial phase, uh, sir? If I'm uh, one is to see for the tumor con uh, uh, contact if there is any with the uh, major arteries. Uh, they they called it a necrotic mass. So you want to look at the first the vascularity itself, no? Yes, sir. Vascularity of the oh, mass. What is the uptake within the within the mass? We don't know its necrosis, no. Ultrasound yes, doesn't have an, a microscope attached to it to see the necrosis, no. Hmm. It's just an interpretation. So for that interpretation, we need to see whether it is vascular or not. Okay. What can it be? A cystic neuroendocrine tumor? Yes, sir. It can be there. That can be picked up beautifully in the arterial phase. In arterial phase. What else? He's got uh, leukocytosis. Could be an abscess. Absolutely. So there will be at the periphery, yeah, periphery look, hyper enhancement, and we are thinking only of pancreatic abscess, but there could be some some undiagnosed uh, uh, thing which might give us clues elsewhere. Something else might light up. Yeah. Okay. Yes, then, uh, then, uh, sir, then portovenous phase is taken. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, in the arterial, sir, at the arterial anatomy, I would also like to see. And uh, why? Why do you want the arterial anatomy? Sir, what one is to look. What we will you see, and why? Sir, uh, one is to look for the uh, contact of the tumor, if any, in the with the common hepatic artery or the uh, uh, celiac artery, or and the uh, origin of the common hepatic artery, and also the right and the left hepatic arteries uh, to see if they are encased, and also if I am planning a surgical intervention later, so I should be aware that there is a aberrant anatomy, and I should be. Taking care of that, especially a replaced right. Specific ab aberrant because you will have to look for it yourself, isn't it? Ninety-nine percent of the CT scans do not mention it. So, what specific arterial anatomies will you look for? So, one is origin of the uh, uh, hepatic artery from the celiac axis or directly from the aorta. Second is whether a replaced artery from the celiac. You want for what? Sir, uh, it can have an aberrant origin also. Very rarely, although very rare. I am starting with the origin. I don't understand. So, say, say what a specific thing you are following the celiac artery. What will you look for? See, you are following. Uh, what I am, what am I trying to assess? See, put yourself in my position. Yes, I need to see whether you are able to look at a CT scan with what intent. At this stage, don't start with a theoretical list. Tell me, you know, what all are you going to specifically look for? Sir, I'll uh, follow the celiac, celiac axis. I'll see the origin of the uh, hepatic artery. So what is the first Then, thing? Uh, I didn't get that. I will follow the celiac axis. I will see for the origin of the hepatic artery whether oh, it see is the uh, origin of the celiac axis. But I mentioned that, sir. That oh, no, you are not mentioned. I I want clear, succinct points that you cannot miss. Yeah, that's what I am trying to see. Are you saying it as a list which you rattled off? 
I want you specifically to say I'm going to look at the celiac origin. Is that specifically important or not important? Yes, sir. Why, sir? Because uh, it can have a abnormal high or a low origin, and it can be a celiac artery stenosis uh, that uh, is occurring, so that the hepatic uh, artery is taking supply from below. Then the like at the time of ligation of GDA, that becomes important. So you might ligate the GDA by mistake, isn't it? And yes, sir. And cause a liver. Now you didn't have a necrotic, really necrotic mass, and you might get a necrotic mass now. Okay, so you need to say that celiac celiac axis stenosis. What else? Second thing is that origin of the hepatic artery, whether it is from the celiac or it is from an abnormal hepato uh, mesenteric trunk. So, okay, so what I wanted was specifically you to say what is more common than this? A replaced right hepatic artery or yeah, arising from the SMA. Yeah, replaced common hepatic or a replaced right hepatic. What else can you have? A replaced left hepatic artery from the left gastric artery. Yeah, so so all, those are the features you can actually look for. Okay, then, uh, sir. Then I would like to see the uh, if replaced right and left. I have seen. Then also I can have some shed some light on the GDA uh, where it is arising from from the proper hepatic artery or the like common hepatic artery, and then whether the GDA is the, whether in our, any of these arteries is encased in the. Have mass. you ever seen a GDA uh, uh, anomaly? Ever? Uh, sir, one, once or twice, sir. What was the anomaly? Sir, GDA was arising from the right hepatic artery. So, how would you rephrase that? From the left was uh, aberrant, wasn't yes. it? The left aberrant, yes, sir. In the left aberrant or the right aberrant? Because it is exactly so. GDA uh, abnormality, you know, uh, things are extremely rare. You probably, uh, you know, it's very, very theoretical that you're just rattling off a list. So basically, you know, when we are asking you questions in the uh, in the practical, it is to see how how practically you are looking at it, uh, either in a certain order which is common, or you know something which has an impact. Uh, so uh, when you say GDA, it means you are just giving off a list. I will look for an aneurysm in the uh, splenic vein. We don't we we really don't uh, find those. No, okay. What else? Okay. Uh, do we have the CT report? So you have access to this, okay? Yeah. Can you can you report on whatever films cuts that are there? Sir, uh, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. I am there, sir. Just one minute, sir. I will just have it. Sure. Sir, uh, this is uh, probably the day for case. I'm not admitted now. There is no. Yeah, the team to do the day for case. This is. Sir, sir, can you hear me? 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 Yeah, a lot, whole lot of other people also. I feel like I'm very tired. Okay, I muted. Uh, sir, this is probably the uh, uh, non-contrast films have not been provided, and uh, the uh, portal venous phase uh, is uh, uh, showing a uh, the visualized appear uh, liver appears to be normal. That is only the segment six. The uh, there is a heterogeneous uh, enhancing mass. Uh, that is uh, probably seen in uh, relation to the head of pancreas this is the remnant pancreatic tissue this is the mass and uh, portal venous phase eh? what do you call it portal venous okay and heterogeneous enhancing mass uh, is seen in relation to the head of the pancreas this appears to be the formation of the portal vein the 
then it is coming and the smb is forming so it appears to be in close relation and there is loss of fat plane in this part of the mass and uh, it is uh, uh, probably also causing some uh, amount of uh, i'll be able to better characterize it if i have all the cuts but some amount of compression probably on the duodenum right agreed and uh, the stomach uh, appears to be distended with neutral contrast probably okay so one thing you need to see when you see uh, there is no ng like, what sorry. you need to comment on is the peri do you have these uh, fat peri pancreatic fat stranding or not is it an inflammatory mass you're not commented any point uh, you know ruling out or looking for so i i want to see what is the thought process that's going on in your mind right so before you look with this uh, you know when you're describing it tell me what are the possibilities you kept in your mind now after having seen it and then you you know you'll automatically understand how you would describe it better so you, you should can you, you should use don't worry about uh, you know uh, why you seem to get get a little upset why am i challenged with the question uh, right the whole idea is uh, uh, the guy opposite you wants to see what is your chain of uh, stream of consciousness yeah so he wants to know whether what all have you considered so based on that he's asking you those questions remember that bit huh? don't feel that uh, uh, he uh, many of you feel that you know they're trying to challenge you or something why did you ask this it does sound like that but the reason is they want to see what you're thinking of so uh, would you like to tell us because that will help you to improve uh, you know next time when you present the exact same case you can actually improve on it so what are the things that you thought of when you looked at this in the morning when you got this what all did you think of Or it can be a uh, uh, malignancy arising from the head of pancreas. Yeah, pancreas with a neck with yeah, pancreas. Necrosis, yeah, internal okay. necrosis. Now, is that so? You, you, uh, okay. We'll we'll come to the the specifics uh, later. Why? Which is pros cons or why that diagnosis? But okay, that's one. Second. Second thing, sir, could be uh, uh, it can be a cystic neoplasm. Uh, Cystic neoplasm from the head of pancreas. I pretend I didn't hear that. Uh, uh, so post, would you think of uh, post acute? Uh, you know, uh, uh, necrotizing uh, pancreatitis. Yeah, yeah. So, forty-year-old lady with no features of anything else. Yeah. Okay. Then you say that cystic uh, cystic tumor pancreas because of the age and a, a dis. So it's, it's so you will come to cystic uh, neoplasm in this particular case because of the age. the disparity between the clinical size of the lesion and the clinical findings you know for a pancreatic uh, head cancer to get this size without all those features would be unlikely okay uh, it's explaining to you everything so now cystic tumor would come up but you will not say that up front you will start start with saying that uh, so so now anything else any fourth thing uh, sir rarely uh, pancreatic necrosis sir Uh, in the head region a pancreatic abscess acute acute abscess. sequelae no? all the all the sequelae of uh, acute pancreatitis okay yes, what else pancreatic abscess can be there in the head region so that is, that's a sequelae of that only you know but if you ah, if you are okay. saying uh, it could be something else like a uh, pancreatic tuberculosis or something so ah, tb sir i meant the secondary to tb or any other secondary to second to tb sir pancreatic tuberculosis Okay. Tuberculosis. Abscess. Tuberculosis. So, so bunch all the how many pancreatic tuberculosis have you seen or heard of? Four, four, five. Extremely rarely, you know. Three, so, four, uh, 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 so, but so bunch. So, please um, prefix them with a with a adjective, saying very rarely I would like to think of cystic neoplasm, cystic neuroendocrine tumor, or a. Uh, so, don't say that I'm, you're bunching it with that, uh, because in a younger person that would be possibly common also. and yes, third and your and very rarely pancreatic tuberculosis or odd chance that it might be a high rated cyst which is infected etc etc okay very rare you none of those features are there so so why is it not tb what would you see in a tb uh, pancreatic tb sir uh, as i have not given the entire cuts but there will be uh, some uh localized this most more common variant would be the disseminated involving the gland multiple tubercles can be seen other evidence of tb in the abdomen can so be seen you see tubercles uh, uh, yeah. um multiple tubercles multiple abscesses multiple like, so nodes so a prominent nodes if you are seeing a lot of nodes you will think of tb yeah so yes, basically sir. it's uh, the, 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 
it can fit in your even your features clinical features can fit in with tb you got a long history so i'm very impressed that you wrote that in the history itself but you lost out it was just a sort of a checklist because you lost out uh, subsequently you didn't mention that at all so uh, in our country uh, a cult uh, gastric obstruction tb uh, uh, you know gastrointestinal tb is extremely common it is i think the third uh, commonest cause in most series that is there if you see gastric obstruction huh? so in a 34 year old it will probably be commoner than a um, occult malignancy okay so so when you see a mass like this there is still a possibility okay so now with this in mind you have to each of them use weigh the uh, and finally you come out with saying that uh, uh, my uh, uh, feeling now would be so if you know this part when you go back do not mention cystic neoplasms as a first diagnosis in any of your things okay you have to be very careful you don't say that as a you say as a as a you know litany of uh, five six things uh, it could be rarely this 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 you said it means you knew the diagnosis you have to take care about that that they should tell you kiran you want to say something hello kiran you have the pop point that you have no clue what you have yes so, sir i okay. yes sir i would uh, uh, sir on uh, these also uh, there appears to be uh, this is a heterogeneously enhancing uh, uh, mass lesion in relation to the head of pancreas probably some loss of fat plane with the duodenum and uh, there appears to be very close uh, fat planes with the superior mesenteric vein also and uh, uh, there there appears uh, in the axial images also i could not see very enlarged uh, or necrotic lymph nodes uh, okay. so that could not be seen and uh, what else do you not see you, you which you are not mentioning at all i, I so there is no liver liver there is no uh, there is the, there is no, no inflammation so you there specifically what you want to look for see it could still be a pseudo cyst or a, you know one of those kind of things uh, it's a, a relatively rare location But you need to say there's no peripancreatic fat stranding. Fat stranding. The, you know, you need to say all that. Uh, uh, they, you might find in the other uh, the renal, uh, perirenal, and all those. You need to say that important negative. When you see an ultrasound, you don't say in a patient with uh, uh, your first diagnosis was gallstones or chronic pancreatitis. You don't mention that there are no gallstones. That should be what should hit you, right? I want. I'm looking for that. What are you going to? What is the most important things you're looking at in an ultrasound? it's not just rattling off a list which is there yeah okay yes, sir and uh, there appears to be no peripancreatic fat stranding and uh, it appears to be a well encapsulated sort of a mass and uh, the stump there is no nasogastric tube in situ and there are no obvious liver lesions that can be seen in the visualized cuts there is no ascites but you are seeing the stomach a bit distended mm. and even the first part of duodenum is distended with distended mm. that they probably given what kind of contrast negative or positive negative. sir it's a neutral contrast sir very it's good a... thank you that's i that so sometimes you know some uh, stupid examiners like me give you these red herrings they will say negative and you you fall in the trap and call it negative yeah i want to see whether you correct me and say neutral or not very good okay right probably due to the right. contrast or Distended. Okay, so how would you say that? Because the, you, the rest of the bowel also has a, a similar appearance. Color, so yeah. And this is the duodenum, which appears to be probably loss, uh, some loss of fat plane, so it is getting compressed probably by the mass. Okay. So now, what are your possibilities? You want to rearrange them? Yes, sir. I would like to keep uh, malignancy of the pancreas. Uh, Malignancy so now, arising. So, so basically, what I want you to practice is, yeah, how you're going to say what you found it. So uh, now I want to say, call it uh, cystic neoplasms, but I'll say, sir, I cannot rule out malignancy. However, I would like to keep my first possibility of a cystic neoplasm of the pancreas. It's fitting in typically the spin or a uh, you know a mucinous or a 
uh, yes, uh, isn't it? Yes, sir. So now with that, but you cannot rule out melatonin. So with that, it's got it's not a typical one which is completely circumscribed on the top. It's got those uh, awkward planes and all that. So put put that into perspective. So I want you to uh, uh, I want to know whether you're thinking like that or not. So when you put it like that, you know, although this is my first, but I cannot rule this out. So I know he's on the right track. If you just say cystic neoplasm uh, is my first diagnosis, I'm not sure what is the relative weight of evidence you've given to each of the findings you got, right? So you have to yes, practice okay. in your mind when you, even when you see a patient, what all am I going to think of? And that's exactly if you counsel them, you at this stage, you have to tell them, you know, that there's a very decent chance of it being a malignancy. However, the, you know, uh, the uh, uh, possibility of being a completely benign thing is also there. So you need to uh, alert her at this stage. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So now what do you want to do? Sir, uh, I would like to do a... Uh... Uh, next, uh, have the official report uh, with the, and confirm with the radiologist what he is thinking. <laughs> okay. I and, will, uh, what you want to say is, I will discuss with the radiologist uh, uh, with with all the other further things. Okay, that's acceptable. Uh, in in the exam, some examiners slightly get slightly upset about it. I'm not sure why. I think that's a very important. Uh, uh, if you you sound that you're not very comfortable about the whole thing, in which case you must go and uh, discuss it with them. Okay. Yes, sir. Where we are seeing the la the largest cuts, the you know the right side top one, uh, even the bottom one, you're still seeing a relative circumscription. No, so that's very yes, sir. Uh, very likely to be uh, a, a spit or something. Okay. Yes, sir. What uh, is that? The end of your slides, or is there anything you have with you which you, which I don't know? <laughs> sir, one more slide is that, sir. Uh, oh. They have done a FNAC, sir, from the lesion. Okay, okay. So they've from, done an FNAC. So is that a yes. percutaneous FNAC? So yeah, and uh, I think yes, sir. Well, that is what is written. But uh, I would have uh, like to get a uh, either a US guided FNAC done, and I would have evaluated okay, the gastric. The US output. guided was not done, sir. I think probably get, due to the compression of the duodenum, they were not able to. Um, yeah. No, they don't have, so us is also more expensive so uh, 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 if you have a decent window and there's a reasonably good mass which is uh, and you think your uh, now your cystic neoplasm is there uh, your you know the worry that you have about even a pancreatic mm -hmm. neoplasm uh, do you think this is going to be a perfectly operable uh, pancreatic cancer so no so sir it will be a border pros and cons of us in this case taking a tissue diagnosis us versus ct now i'm looking i'm looking at only the practical issues that will tell me how many patients you have seen having both of these done right so think mm -hmm. take, take your time and do it basically what we want you to practice in these sessions is how you're going to do uh, you know how we want you to behave in the real world think in the real world yeah yes sir. so patient is even if it is a what would you choose? what will you say the patient is Patients ask you uh, that I've Googled and I found these two as possible choices for taking a biopsy. Mm -hmm. What's your problem? Is that? What's your sir, uh, it's, uh, sir, since it's a large tumor and there appear to be no lymph nodes, my prob on the probability list, my diagnosis of malignancy is also lower down the order. And even if that is there, then it is a large and probably loss of fat film with the uh, vein is there. So it might be a borderline resectable tumor. So a CT guided uh, FNAC would be better. Uh, you still haven't told case. me a single pro or con. You just give me a After, kind of. Uh, the patient is telling you, I googled and I found two ways of getting a tissue diagnosis. Yes, sir. US, US FNA and uh, uh, CT guided biopsy. What would you recommend for me, doctor, and why? Sir, uh, I would tell the patient that you have not answered was... that question yet. So, one of the things is, uh, I don't know if you notice as a pattern. Uh, please take some time for you, sir. Can you? Sir, yeah, I'm. One sir, am, am I audible, sir? Yeah, you're audible very clearly. I thought. No, I now I can hear you, sir. Sorry. Now I can hear you. Some... Something wrong with your mic, probably, because I thought I, I I have a I don't even need a mic. I've got a very loud voice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, so I don't know if you notice a pattern each time. You know, you are cutting the other person. It's not a good. So you are anticipating the question. Either if you anticipated it perfectly, it's fine. Uh, people will not object, but almost every single time we have been speaking at the same time, isn't it? So that way you miss out the verbal cues in the exam. The guy is trying to help you. Don't think he's trying to, uh, you know, uh, outsmart you. So you miss the clues that he's giving you. So, uh, you know, uh, one of the commonest mistakes we have in the exam is you guys not understanding the question. 
So if you don't understand it, ask it again. But you started giving, I gave you the, the two options and I said, tell me the pros and cons. And you started giving me a whole lot of things about uh, what all it could be again, you know. Right. So go ahead now. What, which would you choose? What are the pros sir, and cons of CT versus uh, uh, EUS? Yeah. Sir, pros would be uh, CT uh, is relatively inexpensive, easily available. Good. And That's what I first wanted to hear. Good. Okay. And uh, the secondly, even if it is a malignant, it appears more to be a uh, cystic neoplasm. And uh, in that, there is no risk of uh, seedling because there are no, uh, and on the, if, even if it is a, a malignant etiology, then uh, it, I would, it is more likely to be a bottling resectable. So don't give a justification. Give, your, give the point. CT has a possibility of disseminating uh, the, depending on the size of the needle, it has the potential. You're explaining to a patient. So explain it like that. Don't give the, uh, here don't give the all those and uh, uh, here to fours and all that before. CT has the potential to cause a dissemination because we are punching the needle from outside. However, in this particular case, it may not be that uh, crucial because I feel it will be a low-grade cystic neoplasm is my diagnosis. Okay. Any other? And the uh, pros for a US would be the chances of seedling are less, but at the same time, the con would be the high cost, the availability in selected centers. She is also having a probably duodenal compression. So uh, the window uh, from the uh, first part of duodenum may or may not be available and uh, that's there with you you can see the uh, the uh, proximity of the first part of the ordinum. you know that wherever it narrows down it will be there hmm. acceptable and, probably poor but uh, possibility will be there okay and the so when you're the, saying about the uh, the, the you know the dissemination what you need to say is even us is going to go through the tissue but it's going to go through tissue which would potentially be resected in the future should you go ahead with surgery so it's not going to compromise your future operability by dissemination so the way you made it out as if the us doesn't go through it goes through air and rematerializes no it doesn't do that you still have to go through the duodenum but that is not potentially going to harm the patient's resectability any which way even if there is seeding isn't it the second you need to you didn't tell me is the size of the tissue that you're going to get that's why i gave you a clue in the question which you didn't hear I said EUS FNA versus CT biopsy. I very, very pointedly told you so that you can get a clue there. Does that tell you the size of the tissue that you're going to get? Yes, sir. Yeah. So yes, which, sir. which would be more likely to give you a need? Sir, uh, CT biopsy. So a thicker biopsy. If it's possible for me, sir, to get and through the EUS, a wider needle, most EUS. So this is your smartness. You need to tell them that you're aware. You got a lot of EUS FNAs done. And you realize that the tissue is less and only some centers use uh, core uh, uh, core biopsies from that. So I will get a, since this is a cystic neoplasm, I don't want to, if it is only, uh, if you just want to look at, uh, uh, so since PET is your first diagnosis in this particular one, same thing if it is a clear, uh, serious kind of a picture, US FNA is just as good because you just want to know whether it's mucin or no mucin, isn't it? Here you want tissue. So see how the subtle differences are there. So that's the way you can, you can tell them that you are aware of which to use in what. So basically what I'm looking at is, do you have that discriminatory sense of using this in the most appropriate setting? Right? Yes, so the spet would be, I feel the most likely, see the way the, uh, there is a separate mass there in that, uh, in the uh, left, uh, the cut on the left side. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you have any more slides or that's done? We're just uh, with the discussion now beyond this. Sir, uh, done, sir. Done with the slides. This is the CT guided FNA was, which was done. So it's showing you both. I didn't get that. Your endocrine tumor. It's showing you both SPET and your endocrine. No, sir. I think probably what they meant was both probabilities can be given. Okay. Uh, you want to look for. So this is actually, if, it, if they're looking for, looking for, those are the exact things I would have said also. That the cystic neuron, the my uh, two things that I want to look for in a CT guided. Uh, so I would have put a tissue, not FN, uh, FNAC, because uh, spend you're unlikely to pick up on. Uh, you know, you will just get some suspicious cells. So what's the how do you differentiate a spet from the other uh, malignancies? Uh, sir, uh, spet uh, will have uh, on the imaging. It will have internal areas of heterogeneous appearance necrosis, oh, and on the FNA on the tissue here. Yeah. 
So pseudo- yes, spent on the CT can be a completely solid. I've seen it uh, being reported as gist. It can be completely cystic. I've seen it being reported as mucinous and uh, you know uh, all shades in between also uh, heterogeneity in between. So you cannot characterize it on a, it's the age and the uh, size uh, uh, in parity with the uh, uh, symptoms that tells us that it's most likely to be spet. So it's a global picture which is uh, uh, where I feel it's spet would would be your most likely diagnosis. Uh, but there's nothing on the CT which will be specific. But on the tissue, there will be. What is specific on the tissue? Both these are beautifully shown on tissue. What all will it show you? Sir, uh, it will be a, a pseudo papillae formation with the epithelial new, uh, component of the neoplasm. Can be seen. And some IHC markers can be applied if we are. What IHC? What IHC have you Googled quickly? Huh? <laughs> Sir. Uh, I the uh, CD10 and CD56 uh, it can be applied and uh, it stains positive for markers of uh, Vimentin and have you? Uh, would you do if you know this is there? Would you do Vimentin and all these uh, or what would you do? So what uh, is one which is commonly available in India? What do the most GI pathologists use actually? I thought it was alpha. I, I, I may be mistaken, but. I thought it was alpha one antitrypsin. Yes, sir, that can be done. Alpha one antitrypsin is also seen. Not because that's very specific for uh, spec, and uh, we used to find uh, most of them positive for that, right? And uh, for neuroendocrine, you will still do uh, either a synaptophysin, chromogranin, neuron. Mm-hmm. One of those, uh, right? So I think are you are you doing your DNB or uh? sir MCH? MCH, okay. So, uh, okay, you saved yourself <laughs> because uh, um, the, I'm just doing one of the, cor- the correction for one of the papers of the, uh, uh, you know, fact, the formative assessment test that they had. And I was very, very depressed to see that not a single person answered the, uh, you know, the WHO classification uh, uh, correctly. So what is the WHO classification? Sir, uh... For uh, uh, you want to know for the uh, neuro classification of neuroendocrine tumor. You like tell me when you ask a counter question. I think uh, Pradeep Prabhala has told you several times. Don't ask counter questions, isn't it? So if you ask a counter question, you must have a. So even if you do want to ask a counter question, what is a better way of saying it? Uh, I would. You said, you said that very beautifully in your first two three slides. I would like sir. to know this extra. So don't counter question. Yeah. So. So probably you're not sure what which one you are saying. Neuroendocrine tumor, sir. Exactly. So you already answered your own question, haven't you? Yes, sir. Sir, I would like. Uh, it is based on three things, sir. Ki sixty seven index, uh, mitotic uh, index, uh, and uh, difference grade of differentiation of the tumor. So Ki sixty seven would be a less than equal to three percent, three to twenty percent, and more than twenty percent. A mitotic index would be less than two, two to ten per. Uh, 50 high power fields and uh, more than 10 per high power, 50 high power fields and so differentiation. Would, index, the figures are different from the uh, Ki67 figures. Uh, yes, sir. Ki67 is cut off as uh, three, three, two, and ten. two per 10 high power fields, sir. So don't talk about uh, high power fields. Uh, 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 is it uh, two and the other one you said is three for Ki67? No, no, no. In the mitotic figures, what's the upper limit you said? 10, sir. 10. Uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, not 10. That's what 20. I'm trying to say. So 20, see, you're 20. not even you're almost upset with me. You see your tone, what it said. Uh, uh, you're not getting what I, you made a mistake and you didn't realize what you're saying, isn't it? So it is also 20. I don't know why. Uh, unfortunately, in the exam, many of them have written 10 also. I'm very surprised. Where did this figure come? Some have even written 50 for the mitotic index. Now, basically, uh, 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 I don't think, I don't know whether you understood this bit. The, the Chi-67 is just an objectivization of the same mitotic index. It is telling you the exactly the MIB labeling index. It's telling you the, the proliferation index. So you, you're trying to say it's three def- separate things. It's not. You can do either the, even the, actually in the current uh, latest uh, 2022 guidelines, they've uh, preferred uh, Chi-67, but till the previous European guidelines also, they said both are acceptable. You, if you don't have Chi 67, it's absolutely acceptable was the previous uh, guideline. So till now, it was absolutely okay not to have uh, Chi 67. It's giving you the exact same thing. It's telling you that 
it's this is the pro number of uh, proportion of cells which are proliferating so it's exact so you're looking at the proliferation index which could be by either of them if you have both available then you use the worst marker whichever is higher okay so i'm not sure this point has uh, uh, and the second is the the th third is the differentiation okay second actually so one is the proliferation index which you can do see by these two methods so whichever is higher you take that and the second is the degree of differentiation in fact in the more recent uh, 2017 the degree of differentiation has come up even for grade 3 whereas everybody in the exam has written as one has to be you know when you put like that nobody understands what's going on uh, one as well differentiated this is moderately differentiated this is poorly differentiated which is ridiculous each of them can be well and uh, uh, moderately because if they found even in g3 there's some which do better than the others right so spet and uh, neuroendocrine so once you find it's one of these any difference between the treatment yes sir and the uh, third still, uh, the would be still a, a, a necrosis within a pancreatic tumor uh, adenocarcinoma isn't it so yes, how would you how would your treatment change between the three sir if uh, there is a Uh, neuroendocrine tumor i am suspecting then i would also like to get a dotatate pet ct done to see for multifocal lesions if there are any small what occult was lesions question? what was my question sir treatment sir what was my question treatment so is, treatment just repeat the question full question in all these three how would your treatment change like thank you thank you so once you have the question can you give the answer now So I thought in you didn't at all. Yeah, yeah. You got the question right, but you didn't uh, uh, reply appropriately. See, this is a classical example that happens in the exam. I'm not telling you what else will you do. I'm saying what is the difference in your treatment ethos between the three. So, for instance, I want to hear in pancreatic cancer, it's very likely going to be with such a huge mass with necrosis with all these vascular contacts. It's very likely to be borderline resectable. Yeah. Okay. Or Locally advanced, unresectable up uh, up uh, uh, per primum. For theoretically, mm -hmm. yes, but you know, at your level, you probably, if you get this patient, you go. What is the counselling going to do? Is very likely unresectable, isn't it? We like to make them uh, resectable by a variety of techniques, but it it would still be a very high chance. Nineteen, you know, you have five percent five year survival in a garden variety of pancreatic necrosis, pancreatic cancer, without having uh, uh, any of these vascular contacts. uh when you hear 15 lectures you start believing that with borderline resectable you can make 90 of them cured isn't it that's incorrect there's a very small prop you need to have that proportion what is the perspective what proportion of them can you actually convert yeah whereas yes. the other two are still eminently curable you i need to get that difference from you out your counseling of the patient has to has to include both the extremes in this particular case right yes. Okay, so now with this thought, what what if it only if it turns out to be a neuroendocrine, you will do that. Any other reason for doing a dotted tape? Yes, sir. Uh, one is that uh, new uh, multifocal mass, and other is uh, occult met uh, metastasis, which can uptake the. Okay. Uh, you didn't mention any tumor markers. Did you notice? You knew <laughs> all along that it is cystic neoplasm. You only mentioned in the serum there, didn't you? In one place. Sir, they have given me the tumor markers. Actually, they are within normal limits. Sir. Okay. So, what do you expect the tumor markers to be? And do you have all well, the tumor markers based on the three things that you said? Is there any tumor marker missing? Yes, sir. One, sir, S chromogranin or S hundred. Okay, chromogranin A. Okay. So, what would you expect in that? Sir, if it is a neuroendocrine tumor, it is more likely to be raised. Okay, so if it is raised, I can tell you in this patient, probably because of the vomiting and all, would have got pantoprazole, huh? So okay. we have to stop that seven, eight days, That's seven right. days before and ten days. Right, 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 right. right. So uh, anything else you want to ask? How you should have put things differently, or anybody else wants to ask? Since there are people on the thing, what is your cutoff time on this? Ten o'clock? Yeah. Yes, sir. What is the curfew time on this? Sir, ten, I guess, sir. so we have passed that so anything you want to say that you are upset about uh, you sounded very upset with me no no sir no sir so it's important your body language uh, doesn't convey that you are uh, you know unhappy or upset and all that yeah so you gave smiles appropriately but uh, i know unfortunately in the virtual setting since we are not face to face uh, body language can get a little uh, funny 
you know, I don't realize half the time that my uh, video is on or off, so I have to keep checking, right? So uh, even when I was putting the charger, you probably notice I'm missing from in action. Yeah. So uh, anything you want to ask? How uh, how should you put uh, things or whatever? Any specific question you have, and then we'll go on to the others. Yes, it was a nice discussion. I learned it. Okay. Do, does anybody else want to ask any questions specifically in relation to this case? Uh, do you have any other thought processes? You can finally unmute if you are in your OPDs and uh, counseling other patients. With so no, Puneet, it was great. Sorry, I, I meant the other guys. Yeah, the, they say you have any other comments? And uh, basically, order? I wanted him to talk a bit more about uh, endocrine tumors because such amount of necrosis and uh, this thing. Uh, he should specify which kind of endocrine tumor is uh, more likely based on the CT findings. So basically, what Desai is trying to say is that uh, uh, you should say a cystic neuroendocrine tumor. Okay. Uh, so uh, you know, just to share with you, uh, many of you feel that uh, the mucinous and cystic are commoner, but we did a, a nationwide survey of, of the top few centers. And uh, uh, it was published, uh, I think, last year or just before that. Uh, that actually, SPEN is the commonest. It's funny we don't uh, realize it, but SPEN is one of the commonest uh, tumors in India. And surprisingly, cystic neuroendocrine tumors was also very common. So we do think of these two, uh, and mucinous and serous had much more specific imaging features. So overall, these were common, uh, you know. Anything else from any of the other candidates? Uh, hello, all of you are now, when we are asking you to unmute, none of you want to unmute. Okay, I guess they just switched it on to show pre present, uh, you know, that they are present. Uh, Avinash, would you want to add anything? Okay, I guess not. So then I think we can uh, uh, call it a day. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Okay. So I'm, I was only giving you the negative feedback. There were a lot of positives as well. I should have probably said that up front also. Uh, but I mean, I was just, you know, unfortunately in this format, it's not uh, easy to give uh, feedback. So I'm realizing I used to be one of the biggest proponents of this uh, webinar format. And now I think I'm uh, the least uh, fond of it. Uh, I pushed the other, the Monday classes, Pradeep Ribala and I started that, but you know, uh, now I'm sort of, it's death by webinar. So, uh, it's like a cornea toothpaste kind of stuff. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot.